This is Eyewitness News Conference with Bill Butel, a discussion of issues important to the metropolitan area. And now, Bill Butel. Good morning. Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization made some history at the White House on Thursday this week. They signed an agreement on the future of a portion of the West Bank. Yasser Arafat and the Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin signed the deal as President Clinton looked on. There were smiles and there were handshakes, but what is behind the agreement and what does it mean for the future of Israel? That is the topic of this week's Eyewitness News Conference. Our guests are Malcolm Hohenlein, Executive Director of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, Howard Barbanel, President of Likud USA, and Colonel Yonatan Lerner, former head of the Strategic Planning Department of the Israeli Defense Forces. Eyewitness News political correspondent Pat Dawson joins me this, mor this morning, as always, in the questioning. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. The agreement that was signed this past week on Thursday at the, at the White House, is it a good agreement for Israel or not, Mr. Barbonell? Uh, we emphatically feel that it is not. Uh, we're very concerned about the rushed nature of this agreement. It was signed uh, off uh, by uh, Foreign Minister Perez two and a half hours before the start of the Rosh Hashanah holiday. Therefore, all of Israel and most of world Jewry <laughs> had no chance to uh, look over this document. It was rushed through the cabinet on Wednesday, a signing on Thursday. Uh, it seems like uh, uh, someone who is signing a very detailed mortgage or an insurance policy without reading the fine print. We've got 460 pages in this document and no one knows what it says. Uh, we think that, uh, that this is far too fast and that the Israeli people are not being given an opportunity to debate and discuss this issue in, uh, appropriately. Well, as we understand it, and we haven't seen the document either, but as we understand it, it, it means that something, whatever percentage it's going to be, maybe 90 percent, in March of 1996, the troops will move out of that section of the West Bank? No, no, uh, no, not no, 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 not at all. There, okay. there. Well, what, where, where was I mistaken? Be, uh, the withdrawal will be from 5, five to 10 percent of the area of the West Bank. The big cities, the Arab cities, seven Arab cities, with the uh, IDF, the Israeli area, military force will withdraw from that area. Other 95 percent, the IDF will remain responsible fighting the terror and keeping the security there. Well, I was wrong in the percentage, but, uh, but yeah. Mar March, March 96 is the, is the, the date yeah. for the implementation of the first, the, uh, the, the yeah. first withdrawal, right? Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. But it's very important because from, for a very long time, the government of Israel was accused as, is, as if most of the area of the West Bank is given to the Palestinians and the effects are totally different. Well, I but beg to differ on that. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the agreement, as I understand it, will call for Israeli forces to withdraw from rural areas and from the vast empty stretches of open space uh, in uh, Judea and Samaria. Most of the territories are, are open and deserted, uh, and that the Israeli government's plan is to withdraw from that, which is a code word for no uh, additional Jewish development and no additional Jewish settlement in the territories and this is something that we think is uh, very grievous. But Colonel, uh, Colonel Lerner. Yeah, I, I would like to answer the details here as not as much as important and the uh, attack on the agreement concerning a detail concerning a road here and a road there are not what important because the opposition to the agreement opposed the idea that the, 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 the West Bank will be divided between Israel and the Palestinians. And if you ask me whether it's a good agreement or not, I, I consider it's a good agreement because it, it is on the track which is needed to Israel and to the Palestinians. That in the future they will be, they will live each next to the other in a peaceful way. Not involved in each other, not in a same binational state, but two society living one next to the other. And it's a very complicated situation there. And that's the reason that a complicated situation needs complicated solution. But to see it, be, and that's the reason it's a good uh, agreement, because it's on the track for the understanding that both society will have to live peacefully, one each next to the other, and not together. Let me bring uh, Malcolm home. I think that the differences we hear here and uh, we've seen in Israel and the very deep divisions. It'll come up for a vote in the Knesset uh, this week and uh, it's not sure at all what the outcome will be. It could be that it will win by one vote or it could be a tie vote which is a defeat for the bill or the difference might be two votes but it won't be much more than that. This is a very complex situation and it's a very complex agreement. It runs more than 400 pages. It's not that no one has read it. Obviously people who wrote it read it. Others have 
have uh, dealt with the, the segments of it and, and parts of it. And uh, the statistics, one can argue, it's, it's a withdrawal over 18 months. It does involve more than 3 to 5 percent uh, of land that will be ceded. But the Israeli uh, IDF will retain security control over, over more than 90 percent, although the Palestinian police will operate not only in the cities, but also in the villages and other areas. The real test and the answer to your question about whether it's a good agreement will be in the implementation. If, in fact, security is achieved, if, in fact, the Jews who live in Judea and Samaria, if the Jews who live in Israel and the Arabs who live in Israel are not subject to terror, if Arafat lives up to his commitments, meaning that they change the covenant, meaning that he exercises the control over the areas where the Palestinian Authority, if he sets up the infrastructure to meet the needs of the people, then people will have more confidence in this agreement. If, in fact, he does not, and if, in fact, Hamas continues and the other groups continue their terror attacks, including some elements of uh, Fatah, then people will say this is not a good agreement. That will be the test. Yeah. I think the one, one can uh, argue the details of this and has to, because I think they are important, but nobody has read it. None of the people sitting here, or, or in fact, no, most other people have. Ev evaluating the agreement at all it not, doesn't come from one detail of the exactly. whole problem. That's true. It's a division. According to which this agreement goes, and the vision is a separation of the two societies, that they will leave one aside the other. If the vi the vision is correct, it's a good one. And the dangers wow. in the agreement, if you, there are other dangers, is whether the Palestinians will feel the real change, because as long as Israel well, that remains, will depend on Arafat's uh, implementation of course, and taking got, control. Well, one of it goes let, me, let, me, let, let me jump in here and ask yeah, so. Barbanel if there's a, this is because I think this is the relevant point. Is there any division? Okay, is there any set, uh, uh, ceding of significant parts of the uh, of the West Bank to the Palestinians that would be acceptable to your group or, for that matter, to the Likud Party in Israel? Well, our problem with this entire scenario is that the well, majority... Well, let's put aside yes. this, that, that scenario. With this particular question, our problem is that the majority of Israeli people are not for this. Poll after poll has said that they reject this process. The problem is that Arafat has not lived up to the terms of Oslo 1. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, we do not see uh, uh, that why terrorism should be rewarded. Uh, terrorism is up 75 percent in the last two years. We do not see this as enhancing Israel's security. And we do not see that autonomy, because you have to remember it was the Likud that introduced the whole concept of autonomy at Camp David and, at Camp David and again at the Madrid conference. And the concept of autonomy is for people, not land. And what this government is doing is they are in effect saying that the primary rights of Jewish legitimacy throughout the territories are secondary uh, to the rights of the Palestinian Arabs. No, and that which is no, no, so quite therefore, frankly a position well, that most of the world takes. Well, so well and that, and that, uh, and that uh, frankly what they're saying is that there will be no more Jewish development in the territories, that there will be no more retention of the vast state-owned lands in the territories, and that, uh, and that uh, to, uh, to appease terrorism, which is what really is going on, the more that Hamas blows Israelis to bits on buses, the more this government feels pressured. Now, the final thought on this is that uh, uh, this government lacks a Jewish majority or a substantial majority in the Knesset to, do, to uh, undertake these policies. Now, let's say, if, as Malcolm says, that the vote comes up and it's one vote apart or two votes apart, that is based on the strength of five Arabs who are voting with the government. There is no Jewish majority, just as there wasn't for the Golan Bill and for Oslo 1. The vote was 61-59. No, and again, Oslo, there is for, no... Not for Oslo 1. There is no... There to is no... The numbers. There is no two-thirds or three-quarters support in the Knesset like there was with the treaty with Jordan, where the vote was 104 in favor. There is no overwhelming mandate for this government to do this, and in the process, they are causing a deep rift and schism in the world Jewish community. Let me, let me just be sure if I understand here. Um, I think I took from your answer that there is no massive ceding of uh, either territory or, or autonomy to the Palestinian Arabs in the West Bank that you would find acceptable. Is that, is that the substance of your answer? No. We are okay. all for... Then, then please describe in simple terms what you would whether, Likud, whether or not the idea <coughs> is acceptable <coughs> to you. Or the Likud <coughs> position is autonomy, not sovereignty, not an independent state, not, uh, not an army, and not postage stamps, and not passports. Our answer is autonomy. Let them run their daily lives. Let them run their municipal <coughs> affairs, their schools. Uh, their social services, their health services, their tourism, 
but no to a second Palestinian state west of the Jordan River. So they would, they would not really be, have the, what we would describe in the West as the benefits of any kind of full citizenship. Uh, no, we feel that they should be, as they are now, citizens of Jordan, which has a 75% Palestinian population. And we see that as a Palestinian state, and they should sit in the Jordanian parliament and express their democratic rights that way. That requires the, the approval and the acceptance of the Jordanian government and the Jordanian king, does it not? Yes, but the Jordanian <coughs> king is the monarch. He's an absolute ruler. He's a despot. In fact, he is suppressing the Palestinian people's legitimate national rights on the East Bank. Uh, and, uh, and, and crushes them brutally uh, uh, with military force. Well, that's a, that's a wonderfully uh, convenient uh, uh, solution for Israel, but I, I don't know that the, uh, that the Palestinian Arabs, who, you know, who had lived in, uh, on the West Bank for a rather extended period of time would be entirely comfortable with it. Don't you have any particular concern about their, despite the disagreements of the last half century, about their legitimate, I mean, I assume you, you see that they have some legitimate claims to live in these places. We're not interested in expelling anybody from anywhere. Well, you just uh, said they should go to and live no, no, in no, the No, 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 I didn't say that. What I said is that if they want to participate in a national parliamentary democratic system, then it should be done in the context of Jordan's parliament, not in the Knesset, uh, not in the, in the Israeli mm -hmm. Knesset, and not in the context of an independent state the size of Brooklyn and Queens. Let me ask you this question. You said that you do not want, you, you accept autonomy, but none of the other things that you mentioned. D does, uh, is that auto autonomy not the same word as self-determination? There is self- if it is not, you apparently don't want self-determination for, for well, at, sure at any, any well, point for the Palestinians. Well, what is the concept of self-determination? Does self-determination mean that you have an army, that you have, that you have international borders, that well, you have a seat a in the UN? Phrase, I, will, I, will, uh, I, I mean, know. to live a free life and a complete life, doesn't it mean economic opportunity? Uh, does it mean that, for example, the people in Nassau County don't have self-determination through their elected officials? Well, let me, let me, I, I because that is know. a complex phrase, let, let me ask Cur Colonel Lerner yeah. a question. Can the people who live now in Samaria and Judea in the West Bank, can they feel safe and secure with this gradual, the gradual turning over of military power and security to the, to the Palestinians? And let me, let me accentuate with one yeah. thing. About eight months ago, um, the, ch the head of the PLO police in Jericho said to me when I asked him a similar question, he said, it is not my job to take care of the, of the safety and security of the Jewish settlers in the West Bank. Now, g given that statement, can they feel safe? Well, uh, probably as time goes on and he got more and more responsibilities, according to the agreement, he has some responsibilities. That terror acts will not, won't be initiated from the area which he is responsible of. So as time goes on and their agreement is more and more accurate and it expands to the whole area, then of course the things, are, are, things have changed. But let's talk about the security. Israel have made, the, the process was too long, much longer than the, uh, it was expected in the DOP on uh, Oslo two years ago mm -hmm. because the government of Israel felt that she had, had to do anything to protect it's uh, the settler, the people living, in, uh, the Jewish people living in the West Bank, and the army was involved, and we are going to invest in the West Bank a lot of, of money in order to buy uh, to construct new roads, <coughs> made just for the security of them, and we remain responsible on the security of on most of the area just because we are we want to assure the, uh, that the uh, security of those those people will be at least as is the situation is today. And if we go on with the agreement and it will be more successful, the situation will be better because the Palestinians will probably and hopefully reduce their terror activities. I won't say it can be stopped because my small groups can everything do everything everywhere in the world. But I'm talking about the majority of the Palestinians won't support terror anymore. So at the end, we believe that the situation will be better. We are not talking yet about the permanent <coughs> status of the West Bank. But I want to, to refer to what was heard here about the future of the Palestinians. Since the situation is so complicated, it became that it's my interest that the Palestinians became a, sta a stable society. Because we live together. Because we are neighbors who share the same rooms, the same apartment. So it becomes my interest the way my neighbor, uh, uh, my partner, 
act. Mm -hmm. And if I can facilitate, and if I give him the right asset in order to him to become a stable society which have elected organizations, which is a, a, the energy is a, a confronted inside to his own problems, to the day-to-day -day life, <coughs> I have to do it. Because you it's my, and if to leave the Palestinian in a situation that they are responsible about healthcare, that they are voting for uh, the parliament of Jordan, ever since they are sitting in the, in the West Bank, that won't give them any hope. And it's a, it will just a time bomb. It will explode. I want to, to reach a situation in which the chance that the Palestinians will be satisfied with their situation will be everlasting. And I must say, we, we, I wish we had everlasting time. We're going to take a break. We're going to be back uh, with our, con continue our discussion in just a moment, but first this. <laughs> Welcome back to Eyewitness News Conference with Bill Butel. We continue now with our discussion of the latest agreement between Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization. Pat? Um, Malcolm Holmline, uh, Mr. Barbanel, said before that a majority of Israeli public <coughs> opinion is opposed <coughs> to the idea of uh, the, the general principles of this uh, peace accord. Um, first of all, do you agree with that? Do you think that's an accurate statement of Israeli public opinion? Well, there are different polls, uh, in fact, polls that have just been done in recent uh, days uh, since the agreement was announced, which show different results. There is a majority, uh, a plurality, I should say, that has expressed deep concern. They don't know the details as well. There have only been the outlines that have been revealed, and I think people are looking at past performance. They see the, the, the terrorism that has continued, Arafat speeches, things that have undermined confidence, which is essential, because the truth is that Israel comes to the table to give, everybody else comes to take. Israel is taking the risks. They are making the concessions to the Palestinians. And, and while the concessions may not be as great as, as some believe them to be, and they are gradual over a period of time, that is why performance becomes the key. No one wants a Palestinian state, not Likud, not labor, not the US government. Everybody recognizes that it will be unstable. A confederation is an optimal solution, but nobody believes it's practical now. What we need now is to put this to the test to see whether Arafat will live up, whether the Palestinian Authority can uh, assume the responsibilities that have been given to it. They have not yet proven that they can. And I think that that fear and that concern is reflected in the polls that uh, one sees in Israel. Do you think that Israeli just public if opinion, I let, me, let me just finish this one question. Do you think that Israeli public opinion is patient enough for what we might call the normal birthing process. You don't create uh, even a, a shadow state, which is what we might call what the Palestinians are, are creating now in Gaza and the West Bank. You don't create something like that in the course of a year, two years, or even five years. It takes a significant amount of time, 10, 15, 20 years before there is the kind of stability of which you've all spoken. Um, is Israeli public opinion patient enough for that kind of the birthing pains that go with that. I think the Israelis have demonstrated in the past, in the Amit and other play times, that they are ready to take unprecedented risks to, to demonstrate not only patience, but to take very bold moves. What they want to see is the response from the other side. They want to see whether there really is the performance. Uh, the, there is the ultimate question, what is the alternative? What is the alternative to what is going on now? And that is the question. Can things remain as they are? Is it a, a, can you just have the status quo? I think most of them would respond that the status quo was not acceptable. To have the intifada, you cannot to, to go back to, to that kind of period of violence and unrest as well. On the other hand, I think that the government has failed to try and bring the people along, to have the kind of, to reach out, to, to explain enough to the people, to bring them along in this process. And I think the debate in the Knesset will, will reflect that. I think a lot of the concerns, which are legitimate, people see their future, their lives are being negotiated. It's the security of their country. This is not something 8,000 miles away. When we participate in negotiations uh, from the United States, we always talk about things in Europe and elsewhere around the world. Here they're talking about people living a few kilometers away, a few meters away, in fact, in some places, where it'll be turned over to, to the control of the Palestinian Authority. Yeah, well, Charlie, you had yeah, something yeah uh, first of all, most of the polls showed that most of the Israelis want the separation between the two societies. That's for sure. That's true. Uh, they do not. What kind uh, of separation? Uh, now, you, you, that's that's you can ask yeah. a lot of different questions. There, there, there now. has been talk, talk uh, some time ago, I guess, 
of separation, physical separation, that is a fence around Gaza, an eight-foot high fence around Gaza. Is that the kind of separation you mean? For instance, yes, this is a, most Israelis, I want uh, just to remind ourselves, I take the, point. the opposition to the first stage, to the agreement about Gaza, the way the people who opposed this uh, agreement said that the terror from Gaza against the shelling, they envisioned the shelling of mortars from Gaza to the, uh, to the kibbutzim, to the cities around Gaza, and today ask the Israelis whether they want to return to Gaza. Most of them say that it's the best thing that happened to Israel for the last years, that we are out of Gaza. So once again, you see the people who opposed the, uh, the agreement, they oppose it because the, there is a break. It's a breaking point, it's at the point of decision whether we are going for a greater Israel and a, 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 a state I in which the, I, a state in which there is a large minority with no equal rights, or we are going to a separation to leave one aside the other, as I mentioned before. Mr. They, in just a minute, they opposed everything. No matter now, they are talking that the, as, as uh, my friend here said at the beginning, that the problem is the agreement <coughs> is that it was, was decided too fast. The last criticism was that we, they don't sleep at night. That's not the problem because they oppose every idea that we, from our interest, from the interest of Israel, will decide that the Palestinians will have the, the conditions to become a stable society living beside us. Mr. Barbanel is turning red with frustration <laughs> trying to get his answer okay. in here. I'll tell you that our problem in a <coughs> nutshell is this government does not have a mandate to undertake these kind of sea changes. Uh, it has a minority, a Jewish minority in the Knesset. Uh, it does not have a two-thirds or a three-quarters majority of votes in the Knesset to support this as it did with, uh, as it did with the treaty with Jordan or uh, with Camp David a number of years ago. Uh, when running for office, this government pledged no negotiations with the PLO, no Palestinian state, no compromise on the status of Jerusalem, no withdrawal from the Golan. So this government has done a 180 degree turn on the electorate and if they had been campaigning on what they're giving Yasser Arafat today, they might not have been elected at the time. But isn't it, but isn't it true, Mr. Barbanel, that in fact governments in these kind of circumstances always have to be a little ahead of public opinion? They have to be ahead of the mandate? Leaders have to well, there's, or, no, there's no question or, about that, but you have a scenario here where the leadership doesn't care what 50% or more of the Jewish public thinks and has says so, said so. I have seen, and I have it on videotape, Mr. Perez and Mr. Rabin saying they don't care what the people think. They vilify and insult huge segments of the Israeli populace on a regular basis. Uh, and they talk about this greater Israel. You know, what are you talking about, greater Israel? The whole country is 40 miles wide from the Mediterranean. What do they mean by greater Israel? Greater Israel is a, is a jingoistic, pejorative phrase, a put down against the Likud position which says that the uh, borders of the state of Israel should be from the Mediterranean to the Jordan and that Jews will have full rights to settle and to live and to develop in the empty open spaces of Judea and Samaria. What is the, uh, what is the legal empty. basis for that? The legal basis for that is the same legal basis that we have for existing. Since in the last hundred years we have been fighting a conflict with Arabs over... the state of Israel was created over essentially in the 1940s by, you know, under the jurisdiction of the United Nations. Well, the, the United Nations it was ratified it, it but yes, exactly. the United Nations ratified it, but the inherent uh, uh, national rights of the Jewish people to the land of Israel is a claim that has never been given up over 3,400 years. Yeah, so and there has, never been a t there has never been a time well, in 3,400 sure years. Well, I'm sure that if you ask the Sioux Indians, they've never given up the, the inherent yep. rights of the last couple thousand years to South Dakota. Sioux so Indians are probably question. right, but, but, the, but the real life is, is that the they had to give it up. The difference is, no, the it's difference is that we are the Sioux Indians in Israel, not the Palestinian Arabs. We have documentation which shows that Arabs streamed into the place like Mexicans across the Rio Grande right from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. While Jewish immigration was restricted by the British, Arab immigration was wide open. Anyone with a kafia could find their way into the country. But the question is not the legal status. The, the, the one can argue that question. The fact is Jordan occupied the land. It was only recognized by England and Pakistan. Nobody else recognized their occupation of it. The question here is not the legalities. The question is the practicalities and the realities. How is Israel and how are the people to live secure lives? How are the Jews, first and foremost, to have a secure life, a secure future, economically, uh, militarily, 
physically. Wouldn't the Palestinians make the same argument? And isn't and, that every bit as valid as the Jewish argument? And, and I'm saying and that they provide for their security and for their for, for valid life. F fact is that Israel is the first one to give the Palestinians the opportunity for, for any kind of expression to take control of their lives. The Jordanians ever. didn't. No one else ever did. The Turks didn't ever give, recognize the Palestinian right. And yet the Israelis are and taking great risk in doing so. I'd, I'd, I'd like to just yeah. interject parenthetically that Arabs don't have to worry when they walk down the streets of Jewish towns that they're going to get assaulted or killed. It's only Jews that have to worry when walking in Arab neighborhoods. I, I, so I want how to, do you change I, this, this situation? I, I you want, want to I change want to, it. I want to interrupt and change, this, yeah. change the subject for just about the one minute we have left. There's been a lot of criticism over the past couple of days of uh, Johnny Cochran and the O.J. Simpson trial for comparing uh, Furman to Hitler. Briefly, what do you people think of that? As spokesman for one, one element of the Jewish community, you're not Malcolm? Well, uh, personally, I think it was outrageous. The <coughs> fact that uh, regardless of the motivation or the context, the fact that someone could minimize and, and almost ridicule the role of Hitler by comparing him to a detective is feeds into the revisionist histor historians who tried to, to rewrite history to try and make uh, Hitler into to what he was not. He was a mass murderer. He was not somebody who tried to doctor evidence. Mr. Barbineau? To paraphrase Ron Goldman's father uh, the other day, uh, it's, it's quite amazing that you can compare Furman to Hitler while surrounding yourself with Nation of Islam bodyguards. Colonel Lerner, these days it's very cheap to use all the terms of Nazi, Holocaust, Hitler. People have to think what was there and to study it once again to understand exactly what are those terms and names. Gentlemen, uh, Malcolm Hohenlein, Howard Barbineau, Colonel Jonathan Lerner, thank you very much for being with us. With Pat Dawson, I'm Bill Butel. Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a wonderful day.